Have you learned that game? One thing I have told you to learn. Micah, we have studied. Huh? Emma, you learned all five forms. Okay, you just try with your person. You also have to try. Let us recollect. Ah. In igneous and metamorphic rocks, they are found in? They are found in. Cracks, cracks, joints, or crevices, crevices, uh, small, small, uh, small, small, small circumferences are called veins. Veins and large circumferences are called nodes. Ah, that is first of all. Hmm. Huh? You also uh, learn it. Ah. Minerals are deposited. Uh, Sediment, sedimentary rocks. How it is formed? Huh? When try hmm. no problem. When you are not trying, no, you feel that whether this word is correct or that. Beds or layers. Yes. In sedimentary rocks, minerals occur in buds or layers. They are formed as a result of deposition. Layer ke upper layer layer karke deposit karta hai. That is how in sedimentary rocks it is formed. Then example is called. Then other minerals also, gypsum, potash, salt and sodium salt are also formed in that way. Next, residual mass of weathered material. What is that? Formed by decomposition of surface rocks and removal of soluble particles. Hmm? Okay. Next, in alluvial deposit, where it is formed? Placer deposits. That is, from one place it is removed and deposited in the other place. That is what it is called a placer deposit. And the ocean, it is deposited at the ocean beds. Or that, uh, it is scattered also. Some of the deposits, the deposits are scattered. Okay, learn one by one, one by one. If you are learning, then it will not be a big problem. Now, we have to study about the rock 
minerals. What are rock minerals? The minerals which are found in association with rocks. Okay. That is rocks composed of calcium carbonate or calcium and magnesium carbonate. See, I'll tell you one thing. You listen. There are uh, some kind of uh, deposits under the earth. That is when rain water percolates underground. It is reactive. And uh, it is formed into calcium bicarbonate or like that. Some hill like formation it is formed. Some pillar like, some cave like. That is under the earth it is formed. So it is as a result of the reaction with that atmospheric uh, uh, carbon and the presence of calcium carbonate. Okay. So that is how rock minerals are formed. What is that? Limestone is one of the examples of that. You tell me how that uh, uh, this rock minerals are formed? Huh. Or? Or calcium and magnesium huh. So, sedimentary deposits only it is mostly formed. The limestone is a sedimentary rock. Now, when water percolates underground, it reacts with that calcium carbonate and forms into calcium bicarbonate. So, like that, hill like, cave like, and pillar like formations are formed. Okay. This is a raw material for cement industry and essential for smelting iron ore in the blast furnace. So what are the uses of limestone? You write. Smelting? Yes. Uh, what is that uh, smelting? Uh, that, uh, that uh, yes. Uh. So blast furnace may call dark or melt. So that is what uh, then only it can be shaved. The that the iron, when it is hard, we cannot do anything. When it is smelted only, it can be shaped. So that process also, we need a limestone. Got it? What are the uses of limestone? It is an essential raw material for cement industry and a smelting of iron in blast furnace. Got it clear? Now, where are we found? Ah, just to keep it tight. Ah, geo sedimentary rocks, then ah, regions where it is. See, maximum production is in Rajasthan, then Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Karnataka, Telangana, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra. These are the regions where this limestone is formed. Now, let us see hazards of mining. Yesterday, we have seen mining is a very dangerous process. Hmm? But is that under the earth they have to go? So, in that process, many things are happening. If the ceiling falls, 
then also they will be inside. They will be trapped inside. Sometimes that flood occur. How can they come out? That is also. Sometimes what happens? Fire occur inside. So, and people which, who are going inside the earth for mining purpose, they also face with the so much that the dust is there and the inhalation problem they are getting. So, there is a lot of hazard in mining. So, that is why it is called a killer industry. Why mining is called as killer industry? Can you try it? Why mining is called as killer industry? of the mine roofs. Inundation. Inundation means a flood. Okay. Then fires. These all are threat for miners. They cannot come out and save themselves. It's very difficult. They are under the earth. So many meters inside the earth. So it's very difficult for them to come out. The water sources in the region get contaminated due to mining. That is, general public, it is a problem. When uh, mining is done, nearby areas, the water get contaminated. Then, dumping of waste and slurry leads to degradation of land, soil and increase in stream and river pollution. Okay, all these are the dangers of mining. Because of that, it is called as killer industry. Got it? These all are some of the uh, examples. Called fire catastrophic. Means uh, it co uh, caused catastrophic death. That is how many people underground fires start mostly from burning trash close to the cortex. Fires spread to cold scenes below the surface. Unlimited, sorry, unmined cold burns from poles and mine shafts. People are, are at risk, not just from the smoldering fires, but the poisonous fumes of carbon monoxide which arise up from the underground. Not only from fires, okay, somehow. By the time they accumulated that carbon monoxide along with that, that also goes with the uh, safety problem. Okay, uh, so strict, what to be done? Stricter Safety regulations and implementation of environmental laws are essential to prevent mining from becoming a killer industry. So, what to be done? Proper safety laws to be followed and the laws to be implemented. See, uh, when we are making only laws, there is no use. The laws have to be implemented and practiced. Huh? So, the <clears throat> main way to save the lives of miners as well as the people living nearby is to follow stricter safety regulations. Got it? These all points you have to write them. Now, why there is a need to conserve the minerals? Can you try telling? Why there is a need to conserve the minerals? 
you try from your own la the same so that you can use it for the future yes see many of the minerals are uh, exhaustible they are not renewable so once it to finish it takes millions of years to form so that is why we need to uh, conserve it okay secondly this minerals are required for industry and agriculture every activity we need minerals because of that we need to conserve it its availability is limited so we need to make different steps to conserve it so what are the points we have seen one is that uh, exhaustible huh? then second point it will take millions of years to form you take down that the points otherwise it is not there okay this point also written see when we are mining the resources that uh, on the top layer we extract 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 and then uh, we have to go deep to extract so for going deeper we need more money understood so extraction require huge amount and when it is going deeper and deeper the quality also may not be good so if we are not having good quality and as much quantity we need and more spending on this extraction so why we have to do like that hmm? uh, you think about uh, if you are getting <coughs> one good dress imagine one good dress you are thinking that it will be available in uh, mulut i am telling one place okay mulut 
and you are getting lower compared to the market job which place to now ah i don't now you just uh, if you compare the cost that is, that dress is getting the right a thousand rupees now your house four members are going all four members are going then you will think about the spending some money that they for eating outside and all so the cost will come around 2000 so 1000 ke liye you are going the and spending 2000 is it uh, useful instead of that if you are purchasing here for 1500 you can save it understood this is what happened when we have to go so deeper to extract the minerals we have to spend a huge amount of money and uh, going deeper and deeper the quality also will decrease what is Ah, now, what are the ways to conserve the resource? A conservation effort has to be made in order to use our mineral resources in a planned and sustainable way. So, how? How to conserve? Okay. What is the idea? Concerted effort. Uh, to use minerals in a planned and sustainable way see here two two words i have used planned and second word is sustainable we just write and give uh what is the like planned way that is careful planning of the use of resources and second is the like sustainable way what is sustainability do you remember sustainability yes. ah using the resources mm -hmm. with with a plan it should be uh, provided to present generation and should be uh, kept for future generation ah and second one more thing is that it should not harm the environment without harming the environment am i getting or not so uh, use of resources without uh, harming the environment and uh, allow to use the present generation and uh, keep for future so this way efforts to be taken planned and sustainable way now second improved technologies improve technology to avoid that it loss while extracting see many times there are lot of wastages happen so to avoid that wastages that technology is to be improved then and need to be constantly evolve to allow use of low grade ores at a low cost then use of low grade ores at a low cost understood see that the quality of the ores if it is not good we should not spend much amount in that so at the low cost how can we maximize the use with the minimum cost that is the meaning minimum cost to maximize use now i'll tell you one more example 
in our country so many varieties of uh, four wheelers or like that they companies are making and uh, some of the people purchase uh, four wheeler use it hardly for two years then resell it and they use it if they are of uh, uh, middle class people they will use it for five years then it is uh, brought for resale and the person purchase it they use it for eight years so you see that two plus five plus eight then also not uh, uh, discarding it it is also resold hmm? so when developed countries are there they are producing it for maximum five years capacity after five years they have to discard at any cost but our companies or our country what they are doing engine revamping then making new ways to utilize that vehicle so this is what maximize the use still using so when that car is very old they cannot use it or people cannot use it sometimes uh, they will break down and people have to push and push and push then also it may not work because there is an age for it so but in our country the people use it for 15 years 20 years then also they are not ready to discard it so this is what uh, maximizing the use but uh, what is happening when the minerals are using it again and again sometimes it, it cannot produce that uh, purpose uh, one example sodium chloride what we call namak okay after dissolving in the water can you get that uh, salt back okay to some extent if it is getting evaporated sometimes some part may settle down we cannot make it as it was so the what we have to do oh, make that much only use as much we want and preserve for the next day so our method should be low grade ores at the low cost next is that is recycling recycling of the metal using scrap and other substitute okay whatever we can use the again and again that uh, as a substitute to be used then one more recycling i told you along with that two more asks are there recycling reuse and uh, hmm. recycling and Sometimes it is coming. And I don't remember that one. Ah, you don't remember. I can just for me. Ah, so which are the others you understood? Huh? Search it. No problem. Ah, yes. Reduce. 
So this you keep ready. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. move to the next part that is about the energy resources. Shall I run off? You have completed now? Or do I? human beings growth okay we are talking about uh, for industrialization and agricultural activity the sources of energy okay if we have energy then only we can move forward we can do the work if we are having energy without energy and salmon and nothing can be done huh? So that is why energy is required for all activities. Now, it is required to cook. What energy is uh, used for cooking? Yes. Fire is used. Fuel, that is fuel wood in the villages. Gas is used. Some places kerosene is used. Okay. Uh, th that is what then Power is also induction. Hmm? So, uh, uh, electricity is used for that. So, that is why uh, it is used for um, cooking, providing light and heat to propel vehicles. What is the meaning of propelling vehicles? Uh, that uh, uh, vehicle has to move forward, you know. So, if petrol or diesel is uh, used or gas is used, then only it can move forward. That is so. Then, drive machinery in industries. You just uh, have you gone to Chucky? Ah, uh -huh. chakki means grinding flour. That way. So there, what is happening with the help of electricity only? That uh, rice or wheat or whatever it is uh, put into that uh, electricity on kareka, then inside that machine will work. So the same way, drive machinery is in industry source. Hmm? So what are the needs? It is needed to cook, to provide light and heat, to propel vehicles and to drive machinery in industry. These are the five things. Now, how can we or from where the energy can be generated? You tell me. Ah, which are the sources? 
One is that uh, called. Next is Delta Fast Petroleum. Uranium is nuclear power. Okay, uranium and thorium. Hmm? Then electricity. Electricity is produced from water. Okay, that is called a hydropower. Huh. Now, energy resources can be classified into two. One is conventional and non-conventional. Can you try to define this two? Conventional, how can you define? No. Fire food and the cattle. 
Okay. Now, what are the problems related to the continuance of these? If people continue to use firewood and the cattle dung cake, what would be the problem? What type of problem will? Fire, fire will start, wood will start. Decreasing. Huh? When say if we cut the trees for taking firewood, then that uh, it will finish off. Okay. Then cattle dung cake. Cattle dung can be used as a manure, natural manure. Ah, so this one now will be finished off. And it will not, uh, uh, it will create some kind of uh, pollution also when it is burning. Cattle dung, when it is burning, pollution also will create. So that is why, which can be used as a manure now. Uh, people when they are using it for the product, uh, sorry, for, as a uh, source of uh, energy that cannot be used for man. Okay. Now, about coal, petroleum and natural gas, if you are saying, what type of problem will be there? It will finish off. Hmm? It will remain for few years only. So, about all these sources, we will study. Now, what are non conventional sources? Which are not uh, like Ah, not uh, of convention because it was in use but not uh, commercially. Okay. I have told the example uh, wind power was used for limited purposes. Solar energy was also used, but it was not produced for a, a light. They used it for uh, drying the uh, grains as well as uh, heating that water. Like that, the needs only they were using. Now, as these resources are finishing off, we feel the need of finding some alternatives. That sources called petroleum, etc., are finishing up. So we need some sources to replace it. We have studied earlier, no? What are the problems about that mineral resources and all? These minerals are finishing up. So once it finish off, we cannot uh, get it back. It will take millions of years to go. So because of that, there arise the need of non-renewable resources. Sorry, non-conventional source of resources. Okay. Ah. Among the conventional sources, the first one is coal. This coal is called as fossil fuel. Why it is called as fossil fuel? Hmm? Uh, it is formed from the remains of plants and animals. Fossils. Fossils are the remains of plants and animals which lie buried under the earth for millions of years. That is why they are called a fossil fuels. Okay. Now, what are its uses? It is used for power generation. Ah, so... Then, 
it is highly dependent on cord for meeting its commercial energy requirements majority of the or a major share of our energy production is from cord cord and petroleum that is called the thermal power why is called the thermal power what is the meaning of thermal power What is the purpose of a thermometer? Not a calculator, just. So here, after burning it, a heat is produced. From the heat only, power is generated. That is why it is called a thermal. Understood? The heat is converted into energy. Okay. When we study about hydrogen power, we will understand in a different way. But here, it is thermal power that it is burned and heat is used to produce energy. That is why it is thermal energy. Ah, now, coal is formed due to the compression of plant material over millions of years. How coal is formed? Compression of Plant material. What is the meaning of compression? Press. Huh? So it is believed that yeah, for long time this was lying buried. And depends upon the carbon present, the quality of coal is also. Uh, defined. That is, more carbon content means good quality. Less carbon content means poor quality. Okay. So that is what, uh, as a result, uh, a result of compression of plant material, it is formed. Okay. And the uh, which are the type of cord of this one. The first decay plants in swans produce peach. So the lowest quality cord is called a peach, which is formed in the swampy region. Where it is formed? Swamp. What is the meaning of swamp? Ah, if it is having water, then that mud and all. So the when uh, the what is that your plants remains are buried for some time it produce peach so peach is the lowest quality got it this you have to learn huh? then after that peach next above is lignite it is called brown coal. Hmm. Brown coal. It is soft and with high moisture content. What is the quality? Soft and high moisture content. It is found in Naivali. That is why Namely, Lignite Corporation is formed. Okay. Namely, Lignite Corporation is formed, established for the production of electricity. Huh? Got it? So, the lowest grade is peat. Above the peat, there is Lignite. Now, above that, and the common type of coal is called a bituminous. Bituminous is the most popular coal and it is also called a metallurgical coal. Hmm? It contains about 
say here fifty percent carbon, which one lignite. Then here sixty to seventy percent carbon content. That is the common and industrial coal. And the highest quality coal is called anthracite. About eighty percent carbon. Understood? So that is what the which is metallurgical coal is high grade bituminous coal which has a special value for smelting iron in the blast furnaces. Anthracite is the highest quality hard coal. So this is limited in our country. Only in Jammu and Kashmir, this type of coal is found. Rest of majority of the areas, bituminous coal is found. Got it? And in India, coal occurs of two series. That is two geological ages. The first is Gondwana age. Have you studied about Gondwana? No. I'll tell you that uh, before the formation of Himalayas, the land that is India, present-day India, and the other continents that is of southern part belongs to that Gondwana age. Okay. Long back. Now we know that the Earth is always moving on the asthenosphere. Have you studied about the uh, inside the Earth? It is in the molten form. So because of that, the Earth is that moving. That the Earth plates are moving. Once what happened? This. Gondwana age parts that is present day India, then up to that Africa, that much part belongs to that same age. While moving, they collide with the, the upper Eurasian plate. Understood? The Eurasian plate. And the impact was so high that it crumbled, collided and crumbled. That is how it is believed that Himalayas are formed. There was a sea called Tethys and after the crumbling, that soil and all things deposited on the Tethys sea. And it is go on, that process is go, go on and is the present day Himalayas. So Himalayas, uh, you just, you can uh, this thing, search how Himalayas are formed. Pollution of the continental crust of two tectonic plates, namely the Indian plate thrusting into the Eurasian plate. Hmm? The collision be, uh, began, began between 40 and 50 million years ago and continues today. The Himalayas and the Tibetan plateau stretch 2,900 kilometers along the border. See, after that crumbling, the, the sea, the narrow sea which was there, it got submerged and deposited with that soil from both the parts. See. That you presented is that the Himalaya part is there, no? There was the sea named the Tethys. See, 
This is Eurasian plate. Yeah? This is Indo-Australian plate. Indo-Australian plate consists of that the African part of Australia or all this part, and they collide with the much uh, superior that the uh, Eurasian plate. So when this collision takes place, that uh, what is that the soil and other particles, rocks and all, got filled that the sea which was. It is still as that one. T E T H Y S. No, no, no. T E T H Y S. Prehistoric during Gondwana and that was the earlier day. Okay, let this see. Let uh, this see. Uh, just Ah, uh, that was up to the Atlantic, it was reaching. You see that? Uh, so, and then uh, that region got submerged. And the present day Himalaya is formed. And that part uh, now Mediterranean Sea is there. Some parts are scattered, and the uh, Mediterranean Sea, Caspian Sea, Aegean Sea, and all are there. But in India, what happened? Himalaya is gone. Have you got the uh, understood that much? This is so so, which are the, the first one belonged to the Gondwana age, which was of 200 million years ago. Gondwana age uh, uh, called, belongs to 200 million years ago. That was the first deposit. And the second is tertiary deposit of about 55 million years. Two years. So, first one is Gondwana age, how many? 200 million. Then, second is tertiary rock. Okay, these are the two types of ages, geologic ages of the formation of cod. Yes. Now you just uh, uh, go through this one. Yes, no, don't see. Uh, for fields are uh, marked with this. This is what the locality for port is on. Emma, look here. Here. See, mainly we have studied lignite is there. So here lignite corporation, mainly lignite corporation. And uh, these are uh, the belt where that pole is formed. And in this part, in northeastern part, this much only. This is mostly belong to that uh, 55 million years, tertiary rock. The other one belongs to that pole. Got it? Yes. Jharia, Rani, Ganj, Bokaro are important cold fields, which are the Jharia. Uh, Jharia. Uh, no, Jharia and all are registered in this Jharkhand, West Bengal part. Jharia, hmm. Rani, Ganj, Bokaro are important cold fields. The Godavari Mahanadi, Son, and Gorda valleys also contain. Tertiary calls occur in the northeastern states of Meghalaya, Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, and Nagaland. I have told you. Huh? Now, uh, this why most of the thermal power stations are located on or near coal fields? Huh? 
and we call the uh, particle of that that uh, disturbed by the winding and uh, that whole you just imagine cord is very heavy, bulky. It cannot be transported over long distance. That point you have to write that this cord is very bulky product in which loses its weight when it is transported. And it forms into ashes also when it is exposed. So that is why. Most of the heavy industries and thermal power stations are located on or near the coal fields. These two points you have to remember. Coal is a bulky material which loses its weight on use as it is reduced in mass. Got it? You are having that point? So you have to write. Which are the edges or these things? Shall I give uh, one question to learn? Four types of cord. Ah. Feet, lignite, bituminous, and anthracite. There in your book, a percentage is not given. I have written the percentage. After break. Break time you if you are you want to go out the okay. You take two five minutes break, no problem. <laughs> 